Hi friends. Hi there. My name is Dana with Heal Her Arts and today we are going to be painting Centennial Poppies. I want to go over the materials for this painting so that you can gather them. We're not going to be using all of them right away, but I want to make sure that you have a good heads up as to what to expect for today's painting. Centennial Poppies is a really neat painting and very easy. It does not require too many materials. To start off with, we're going to be using gold and white paint for the background, but we're not going to be applying it with brushes. We're going to be applying it with a card. You can use a card in the mail, an old business card, an old gift card. I happen to have a plastic old gift card here that I'm going to be using today. This is going to be scraping across the canvas the gold and white paint. Um, you can use uh, anything like a mailer, scrap paper, just as long as it is uh, has a bit thickness to it and you can get a nice scrape on the surface to leave a little bit of paint behind but then also pick up any excess paint. After that, we're going to be painting our red poppies on the canvas. Though there are two reds, one of them is a mixture of red and white together trying to make sure I get my focus in here. And then the other is, um, it's actually mostly red, tiny bit of white, but then the other is red with a little bit of blue or black in it. We just want to darken up that red tone a little bit to show a slight contrast from petals in the back and petals in the front. It is a heavily stylized painting. So we are not making true or painting true poppies. I do encourage you also, if you're a particular kind of person like myself, grab a pencil so that we can sketch those poppies in place beforehand. It is not required. Uh, you can just go for it with the paint, but I recommend a pencil if you are a particular kind of person. Again, I am one of those people, so no shame here. I will use whatever tools I can to make a beautiful piece of art. Next, I'm gonna talk about the brushes. Um, we are going to be using really only one brush, but because my canvas is pretty big, I'm gonna be using two brushes. Both of them are round. So here they are up and close. There it is. Oh, my camera does not like my light. I'm gonna turn this light off and then I will show you these brushes again. seems better, right? Okay, here are my two brushes. I have a fine tip brush, and then I also have um, a round brush. It's a little bit larger, and it allows me to fill in some of those spaces a bit quicker. Now, if your painting surface is smaller than this 16 by 20 canvas, you are fine with this one brush. You don't need to. I prefer to use this brush to fill things in faster. Um, so those are the two brushes. And then lastly, we have black outline, black, beautiful swirls and scrolls and all kinds of ornamentation with that fine detail brush and black paint. So I'll go over all that paint one more time. Gold, white, red, a darker red, and black. So that's it. We're gonna start off the painting right now with scraping gold paint sporadically across the canvas. It is going to be in a horizontal fashion, but you can certainly do it vertical. But I wanted to give you a heads up. I'm gonna be doing it horizontally. I've got my card. I'm gonna put some paint on the edge of my card here and just scrape it right across the canvas. So I want to go all the way down from top to bottom. Well, this is not the best sound, right? But you can turn some music on your end. So 
they're going to be doing this for a little while, leaving some spaces and gaps. You want some small chunks, some big sections, some strikethroughs, uh, a little, you know, uh, halfway through. So just mix it up a bit. All right, so you can see I have not filled the whole canvas with the gold, a good amount of it. And I have put the paint on very, very thinly. And I'm doing that for two reasons. One, I don't want too much mixture between the white I'm gonna be putting on shortly and the gold I've already got on there. But then also I need it to dry timely so I can continue on with the painting. Got the gold in place. And now I'm going to um, clean my card off and either rotate it. You can do that if you've got a business card or grab a whole nother card. It's okay if there is still some gold on there. And I'm gonna pick up just some straight white paint and I'm gonna fill that in some of those empty spaces. It's okay if it overlaps the gold I've already got in place here in some areas, but we definitely want to leave some of that just pure gold vivid on the canvas coming through. So let's get going on the white here. I'll start up a couple strokes here if there's any, anything else that I need to comment on to make sure that you do a great job and are successful at getting this step done. I'll let you know. And then again, I'll mute myself so you don't have to hear all that scraping. This is a great step if you happen to have any areas that have um, too much chunks of gold. Now I'm okay with this size piece of gold up here and here, but you can use that white to help break up the gold. So for instance, I'm thinking to myself, oh man, that's just way too much gold there. I like some more variety in the background of my canvas. What can I do? This white is perfect for that. All right, so there, I just kind of broke that, that big thick piece up a bit. Now you may say, oh, that's a great idea, Dana. I'll do that. But maybe you put too much white over top of that section and completely covered all the gold you just put on there. No problem. After we're done going through with the white, if there's some few spots that you'd like to add gold back in, you can do that. Just remember, keep it really, really thin.
Okay, so I've got the white in place and I'm realizing that I think I would like to add a little bit more gold back in. I'm gonna do that not only because I think I'd like a little bit more small chunks of gold throughout, but also if you're still working on the white, uh, that gives, gives you a little bit more time to work on that section or that portion. Then after I'm done uh, putting in a little bit of gold here and there, wherever I want, I'm then gonna use the card to add gold and white on the sides. Now I already have some paint built up on the side, so I don't really need to add too much more to the card. I'm really gonna just pick up that paint on the edges and just scrape it across the edges so that I've got some paint on there and it's not completely blank. That's what's called a gallery edge. When you have a finished edge on a wrapped canvas, it is a gallery edge and it does not need to have a frame to be complete and hang on the wall. I love doing this technique on all my paintings just in case I want to display it without a frame or whoever I gift my painting to does not have a frame. It is already complete in itself with that finished edge. I'm gonna do that now. I am looking over my overall painting right now. And if I see any excess paint built up, I just need to get that a lot of that off of the canvas. And I'm gonna use that on the edges also. It's very possible that when you are putting that gold paint back over top, it may mix with a little bit of the white, that's okay. Uh, but you're gonna wanna be choosy where you want to add that gold back in. You don't necessarily need to do it all the way over all those gold areas you've already put in. I'm going to do that now on the edges.
All right, I'm pretty happy with my background here. It is supposed to be a textured looking background. And so you do want a good amount of activity going on since our painting in front of it is very, mm, I guess, uh, graphic. So it's very simple. So you really want to, you know, do up this background to your heart's content. I have added um, a little bit of gold back into the front here. I uh, scraped both sides. You can also scrape the top and the bottoms of the canvas if you like. I'm not gonna do that, but I'm gonna give you just a few minutes to touch up and fine tune anything you'd like to do on the back of the canvas here. I'll give you three minutes, finish that up, and then we're gonna take about five minutes or so to dry. So that'll be a total of eight minutes. We're going to round it to 10 minutes. Okay. So I'm going to mute myself. We'll be back in 10 minutes and we're going to get started on painting some poppies. So I'll see you back here 10 minutes with red, a dark red and black. All right. So I'll talk to you a little bit more about that in just a few minutes. Happy painting. If it is not drying up and not dry within the next five minutes or so, go ahead and give it a good wave, a good fan, um, or put it underneath of a fan or in front of a fan or a blow dryer um, or outside in the sun. If you've got that for yourself right now, we do have sun outside, but I'm gonna just turn my fan on and crank up the music. Finish this background here and we'll come right back.
All right, friends. So I'm going to check my painting. I turn my fan up super high for my painting to dry. It was pretty good to me. I'm going to um, review the paint and the brush uh, and uh, what we're going to be doing for the next few steps so that if you don't have the materials, you have a couple minutes to prepare. Also, this gives your background a little bit more time to dry if need be. Okay, so I did mention that pencil. If you'd like to use a pencil to sketch things out in advance, that is fine. Just know that you really can't erase. So if you do draw in pencil, I recommend to just sketch, you know, just draw it out, but whatever your shape that you end up going with, just paint a hair past your sketch line. That's all. Um, because sometimes when we sketch things out, because you can't erase it, it may be still visible past whatever you end up painting. So just know, just make your sketch a hair on the smaller side and then paint past that if you end up doing the sketching with the pencil. We are going to be using that fine detail brush I was telling you about just the one, but I'm going to be using the fatter brush here. Let's, we can hold up to my head. You can see it better, huh? Um, just this larger one because my canvas is 16 by 20. So uh, I'm going to be using the larger brush, but you can use this fine detail brush. If, you're, if you've got a smaller painting surface here, there's no reason to go big. Also, you can get more detail and exact line with that fine detail brush. Okay, then the paints. So I've got red paint and what I did is I added a tiny tiny bit of white to it because red is kind of translucent paint in a general so I'm not quite sure what paint you're working with but I have found red paint across the board acrylic paint to be a little bit translucent meaning it takes several coats to make it a solid color so when you add a tiny bit of white to that it makes it a little bit more opaque quicker you don't need as many coats so I have that red and then I use that same red, even with the white in it. And I added a, either a little bit of blue or a little bit of black. You just want like a hair shade darker to show a contrast between those two petal colors. And then after that, we're gonna be doing some black outline. So we'll just need some straight black for that. Some people actually have used, made like a purple tone or a dark um, red brown tone for the outlines. And that works nicely too. So that is an option if you'd like to go that route. Some people don't really care for that harsh uh, black line and want something a little bit more uh, earth tone. So you can do like a, a navy blue, purple. Purple is a mixture of red and blue together. Um, a brown tone, which is a black and red together. It's kind of like a raisin color, um, a deep, deep red. That looks really pretty too. Okay. I'm going to sketch out the actual shapes on a, another canvas because this background can be distracting when you're trying to see exact shapes and placement of them, of course. So I'm going to use this bigger canvas here and my dry erase marker, which I did have around here somewhere. This gives you a quick moment to gather any materials that you have, sit back and relax, listen to music. I'll be right back. All right, well, I ended up grabbing a black Sharpie, which actually can be helpful a little bit later, and I'll tell you why. Um, so I'm gonna use this black Sharpie on this separate canvas. It's actually got a clear cover on it. So uh, black outline, we're not doing a black outline right now. We're actually, I'm just showing you what the shapes look like for the lighter, the red petals of the poppy flowers. To start off with, I'm going to do super easy part, uh, the easiest petal that we have. 
And that happens to be on the left-hand side of the canvas at about mid canvas, okay? So if I were to divide my canvas in half, I can leave my hand there and know that this poppy um, flower shape is above that, okay? And it is approximately, mm, you know, an inch to two inches. Now, mind you, my canvas is much bigger. So it is just a little bit off of the edge. So just assume that you're gonna put a, a border on here and you need to let that breathe a little bit. So just bring that shape in. Okay, halfway down, above that. And believe it or not, it is a wonky heart shape. And so there it is. That's the wonky heart shape. And so I'm just gonna draw all these out and then I'm gonna do it all over again on my actual canvas here. So that is the first red petal shape, okay? Then I'm gonna move over to the upper right-hand corner. Now that particular shape is almost like in the center, it's got like a tulip shape and then it has two ends. Um, one on each side that are uh, um, petals that are a little different. And so that flower is again, top right hand corner. It is, uh, comes away from the edge again, uh, um, from both the top and from the side. So we're in this top right hand uh, quadrant here. And I'm gonna do the tulip section first and then add on the other two petals to um, make it easy in describing the shape for you. So you can see there is my tulip shape and it's kind of like a grade school tulip because it's got those waves at the top. That's how I learned how to uh, make a tulip or paint a tulip when I was in grade school. So that's the, the start of that shape. Add this shape onto the left-hand side. It's like a elongated um, rectangle that kind of just bleeds right into that tulip shape there. And then lastly, I've got like a pointy leaf looking shape on the right hand side. All of that shape right there will get the red color. Okay, so we've got that one in place. Now I wanna remind you, I am gonna do all of this all over again on my regular canvas. I just wanted to give you an opportunity to see the placement, the size, and how to create, recreate these shapes. All right, so now, down towards the central portion of the canvas. Um, so if I were to, again, divide my canvas into quadrants, it is going to be um, about center, but the upper left hand of quadrant four. So we could say this is one, two, three, and four. It's gonna be right there where I put that four. Okay, so this shape also looks, um, mm, I would say like a tool, but also kind of like um, a fan. It's very wavy on top. So what I'm gonna do to start off with, let's put this shape in. Actually, instead of three, I'm, it's actually two here. So we'll just do three. There we go. So that's the one shape. And then we've got those small tulip shapes off to the side. Kind of folds and melds right on into the, the uh, rest of the petals there. And then there is the other. So it is very similar. And then all of that is the straight red. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, get that on my canvas. You may have been painting, may have just been watching, you may have been sketching, doesn't matter. I'm gonna go for all of it again. This time I'm using my red paint and my fine detail brush. Now remember, I did add just a tiny, tiny bit of white to that red paint to help it be a little more opaque so that I don't have to put too many coats on. All right, so. I'm starting off with the left-hand side, that left easy petal, um, looks like kind of like a wonky heart. And that is on about the halfway point, right above the halfway, and then offset from the edge of the canvas. So halfway, 
edge of the canvas there. All right, so there's one. I'm going to go ahead and fill it in now. You can see how it takes me a little bit longer with this tiny brush, but since I've got it, I'm using it. All right, so there you go. In fact, if you want, you can fine tune these a little bit. Make sure when you are painting, you keep the paint nice and thin. When you have a thin paint, you can do multiple layers and um, it doesn't lift up when you paint over top of it. And I would hate for any that to happen to any of you. So nice thin coat. There is the first petal in place. All right, we got this, okay? Next, I'm gonna to go to the upper right-hand corner here, and I'm gonna do that tulip shape. Remember, I'm keeping it just a little ways edge from the top edge and a little bit from the right-hand edge. All right, so there's that. Then remember, I've got that kind of rectangle um, shape at the left-hand side. And then I've got that leaf shape on the right-hand side. I'm gonna fill all of that in also. All right, got that in place. I can even make this tulip section a little bit more dramatic with the humps at the top. All right, we got that. Okay, one more to go. So the last one, if you divide into quadrants, one, two, three, four, the upper left-hand corner of quadrant number four. All right. All right, so there's two little humps there in the center. And then I've got like that, uh, like a tulip, like the three, the three kind of slanted off to the side. So I'll put that in. And then lastly, I've got um, some wavy wave lines going on here. All right, so there is the other section there. And I am now going to fill the whole thing in with straight red paint. Remember, thin coat. I hope everyone is having a good new year so far. I don't know if you made any new year's resolutions and you're still sticking to them, but good luck with that. And I sincerely hope that you succeed with your goals.
Okay, now I've got that flower in. I'm gonna give you just a couple minutes here to fine tune any of your petals if you'd like. Um, go back, look through, see if anything needs a little bit more touch up of paint. I've got my fan on, so it, mine's kind of drying as I go along. You're, you may be uh, drying, but it may take a little bit longer to dry because I'm in a dry climate and you may be in a different situation where things are just not drying for you. I probably will have to fan this off though, since it is, um, you know, I want to put another little bit of a coat on over top some areas. So I'm just going to look through here to um, give you two minutes to uh, resolve any of your edges here. I'm going to actually give this particular petal up in the top right hand corner. I'm going to, instead of being so rounded like that, I'm actually going to give it a point, more of a rounded point, similar to what I've got with this first petal here. I'm just doing a little bit of touch ups. Okay, there we go. There's that one. And I'm going to bring this one to a point a little bit more. You can see it's not a perfect point. Oh, it's not like a sharp point. It's just kind of a rounded um, tapering to help us uh, for when we add that stem, it looks a little bit more realistic. All right, I am good to go. Um, I'm gonna clean my brush off and mix up my uh, darker red tone. My, mind you, it's just a hair shade difference. So don't think it's a black or, or a significant drastic difference between the two colors, just a very slight uh, variation. Give you about two minutes to finish that up, let it dry. I'm gonna fan mine for those two minutes now. All right, so for the next uh, section, um, which are the other petals on these uh, poppies, I'm gonna be using that darker red tone. Like I said, I, I just used what was left over from the previous paint color, um, the red tiny bit of white, and then I added a little bit of purple, I had a pre-mixed purple, like a blue purple, and that worked perfectly, literally a, a drop because that pigment was just so intense and I did not want it to be too terribly dark. 
So I've got that. Once you mix up the color, what I recommend doing is, you know, just putting a dot of the regular red color here and then right next to it, or even on your palette, you know, just put the other color to see how they look together. I mean, they theoretically should be together on your palette already since you're mixing up um, the two colors together. But if you need to paint them and see them next to each other, you've got, you know, either on a palette, I'm using paper plates, uh, or on the back of the canvas. I always try things out on the back of the canvas if I'm a little unsure. And in fact, when I pre-mix colors for a painting, if I want to do the painting over again, I will give myself an index on the back of the canvas. I don't always do it on the canvas portion, but I've got this lip here. You may or may not have that, but I utilize that. And I even write in like what kind of blue I'm do using, what if I have a custom mixture, what colors did I use to make that? Now, I don't get into all the half, half parts, this, two parts, that, four parts, whatever. I don't do any of that, but uh, I just kind of give myself a little bit of a guide in case I'd like to recreate this painting or match the color. Okay, I cleaned my brush off because I'm going to be using that darker red tone. My paint is for the most part dry. If it's not 100% dry, that's fine. I'm going to uh, now outline the shapes of the petals that are in front. They are darker and I'm going to paint that. I'm not going to draw that portion because I, I don't want to confuse you with the drawing of the lines that I have on my sketch already. So I'm going to paint them in. If you want to sketch them in, remember, just sketch smaller than the actual shape, just to kind of give a suggestion of where the shape goes and or how, how big approximately it can be. You're gonna to wanna to go just a hair past that pencil mark if you choose to use um, a sketch outline pen uh, or pencil. All right, so I'm gonna be starting off with that first poppy that we have on the left-hand side. It is that poppy um, closest to the edge of the canvas here on the left-hand side. And it's actually another wonky heart. It's just a little bit lower and kind of shrunk down, a little bit more dramatic also. It does go a little bit past that um, first wonky heart. All right, so there is my shape and I'm gonna be filling that in momentarily. Once I get all my shapes in place, I'll bring my canvas forward. Hopefully it will uh, get in focus so that you can see those uh, shapes up close. Now, I'm gonna go to that top right hand um, poppy and it's actually like two leaves um, connected together at the base here. All right, there's that. Two leaf shapes, leaf shapes. And then lastly, uh, it's going to be just a whole bunch of scribbles across the bottom here, about mid, mid down the flower. It does exceed past the edge of the flower just a little bit. All right, so let's see if I can show you what that looks. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Okay, I'm now going to fill all of these in with that uh, darker red tone.
All right, so I've got a coat of paint on each, each poppy there, each leaf or petal, each petal of the poppies. I'm gonna clean my brush off. I'm gonna give you about two minutes to finish that up. And then if you need to do any touch-ups on that coat of paint, you can do so um, a little bit later. So I'll give you about two minutes and we will come right back. Okay, I'm back. If you need to touch up uh, any bit on your petals, you can go ahead and do that now. All right, I'll give, um, let's see, we're gonna let that dry for about five minutes or so, and you'll come back. We will do the black outline with the fine detail brush, the one we've been using all along, of course. And um, I don't know, I did not mention this earlier, but you have the opportunity to add a three-dimensional element to your painting. Um, it could be one of those paper poppies, or it can be another flower. Uh, or flowers, you can add multiple. So if you are interested in adding either a paper poppy or 
another flower, a three-dimensional element to your painting, go ahead and get that now. And uh, we're gonna be utilizing that to make sure we can do a placeholder for it. I um, did pull myself out a toothpick to poke a hole into the canvas for the stem to go through and hold it. So you can use a multitude of items, a skewer, toothpick, an awl, a nail, a needle tool, uh, anything, or uh, actually a giant needle would work great too. So we'll take a five minute break, let this dry up, get our poppy or flower in place if you choose to add that, and then get to that black outline detail. And also we've got some dots in there too. Okay, we'll be right back.
All right, we're back. Um, my painting for the most part is dry. Uh, there are a couple little wet spots, but I'm just gonna let that be. I'm uh, not too worried about that because it'll dry up probably while I'm talking to you about the next steps. Okay, so we're gonna talk about this poppy placement here. So I want to um, make sure that I get this poppy in place. So I'm going to poke a hole and get that um, set up before I start doing the lines. I don't want it to be an afterthought and I don't want it to be crammed somewhere down at the bottom. So I'm gonna put it in place right now. So, you know, I kind of look at the composition and see where it would be a nice place to add a three-dimensional element. I don't want it in any of the far corners. I don't want it smack dab in the center. So I want it somewhere, eh, probably kind of mid, mid bottom here. I'm gonna put it actually somewhere in between these two poppies here in the middle area. So hmm, this looks good. So I poked my hole with my toothpick, sticking my poppy in. If you choose not to add a paper flower, just disregard all of these steps, of course. All right, so it's not exactly how I want it to be, but it's there in place. So I got that. Okay, remember I was telling you how you could use a Sharpie later on? No, be the wiser. If you are having a hard time with your black outlines, keeping your hand nice and steady while using that uh, paintbrush, you could use a paint marker uh, or a Sharpie. Now you really wanna make sure that your paint is very, very dry for if you're going to use the Sharpie or paint marker, because what happens if your paint is not very dry, that paint will transfer onto the tip and it will not allow the ink to continuously flow out of the tip and then you've ruined your Sharpie. So if you're gonna go that route, let this dry up really, really good. I probably would give it, you know, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, maybe an hour to, to dry before doing the Sharpie or cut that time into just two minutes by using a blow dryer or a high powered fan. Just sit it right in front of the box fan or a fan of any sort and allow that dry, to dry up. So you can use that as an option, worst case scenario, but why not try using the paintbrush first and see how that does for you. You may be pleasantly surprised that you your hands are maybe a little bit more steady than you think and that you can do it. Now, let's just say I've got a friend who does have the shakes and sometimes actually that makes for a really nice line having that motion in your brush stroke. So, you can, you don't have to have the exact perfect straight fine line in order for your painting to turn out nice. I'm gonna leave that to your discretion. You can always practice doing lines on um, a piece of paper, back of the canvas, on another palette, which I use a paper plate. So you can try practicing with the paintbrush before you actually do it on the canvas here. And of course the same with the Sharpie. All right. So fine detail brush, black paint. First thing I'm gonna do is loosely, and I say loosely, I mean loosely, just outline these poppies, okay? Now, the outline is not a continuous outline. It is not exactly right on the edge of where that shape is, that colored shape. It is sometimes on the edge, sometimes off the edge one way or the other. And also it's not a continuous line. It's bro broken brush strokes. So keep that in mind. All right, got some black on my palette here. And sometimes I, my black paint is a little bit on the thick side. So I'll add, um, you know, dip my brush in the water and then mix that in a little bit of my black paint to allow my black paint to be mm, like a thick ink wash and roll smoothly on my canvas. So I'm gonna do that also. Add just a little bit of water to the side of the black. I'm not doing all the black quite yet because I don't, I don't need it all to be like a thick ink wash. So I'm just gonna do one little side of the black paint I have. And then since I've been adding water to my paint, my brush has 
got paint all over, I have two options. I can completely wash it off and then dip the tip back into the black paint or roll the brush so that it helps keep, maintain that point shape. All right, so we're gonna go to the left hand flower here. And I'm going to first do an outline on the petal right in the front here. And so that is just a couple brush strokes here. We're gonna go right over here. That's a good start, right? Okay. So you can see, I did not follow right on the line. That was separate, just right off the edge there. Okay, so I've got that shape or those lines, excuse me. And now I'm gonna do the, the shape above, rolling my brush in the black paint to help maintain that point. And I'm gonna kind of just kind of do an M pump here. All right, so there's that. Now, I wanna give you a little bit of a tip. If you didn't know already, you can achieve fantastic thin lines just by the weight or the pressure you apply on the brush. So if, let's see, I will turn my canvas to the side and I'll show you here. So I'm painting along. Let's see, if I, there we go, painting along. Now, if I'm really, really light, I'll get a nice light line. But if I press down, you can see my line is substantially larger. So light and airy, just kind of just Having the brush tickle on the surface gives you a nice thin line. Applying more pressure onto the tip of the brush gives you a fatter line, a fatter like a weight of a line there. So keep that in mind when you're doing these outlines that we wanna keep it a relatively light pressure to keep those lines kind of thin. Okay. All right, I'm gonna to move to the flower at the top here. And I am going to first do the shape right in the front here. And I'm gonna just basically loosely outline these leaves. So there's one. And then the other. And add a little squiggle in, in it. There we go. There we go. Maybe you will see that black outline. Oh. I'm gonna do an outline on uh, the, the petals at the top there. Let's see if I can do it off the side here. Just a nice thin line, some squiggles. There's one, and then I'll go over and do that there, a little edge. Okay. Just gotta thicken up one of my lines here. Okay, so I've got that one done. And now I'm going to go to this bottom copy here. All right, I'm gonna start with the front. And this is kind of an outline on the sides and not all of the humps there. There we go, I'll show you that one up close. Technology, isn't it wonderful? Sometimes it works great, sometimes not so great. There we go. Okay, now for the top, I'm gonna to just loosely outline uh, the humps up the top here. Okay. 
That wasn't so wasn't too good, but you know, no problem. Uh, it's hard painting from the side here, but I'm just gonna quickly put that in. There we go. Got some loose lines. All right. I'll give you a, a, about a half a minute to finish finish those lines, and then we're going to continue on with some, a few more lines. All right, so we've got some stems to put in place here. All right, to start off with, I'm gonna be on the left-hand side of the canvas. And I'm going to put in some accent lines and then the stems coming down. The stems, when they come down, they don't come down all the way. Also, if your brush runs out of paint, lift the paint, the brush off of the canvas, reload, skip a, you know, a section, and then continue on if need be, okay? So I am first now, going to put this piece in here. I've got a line coming down. And then over at the top here, kind of got a go. mimicking wiggle line there. And now I'm going to the top right hand flower. And I'm going to add a little curvy line underneath that kind of represents not only the base of the flower itself, but then also um, the where the stem begins. Take a little curve here, bring that down. All right, there we go. Poppy right in the front here has uh, a similar curve line at the base. The line that comes down for the stem. And then um, a line that represents a leaf. I'm also going to come back over here to the right hand side. And though my stem is, I cut it short a little bit there, I'm going to pick it back up and continue all the way down to the base of the canvas. All right, I'm going to come back over the left hand side here. And I'm going to put a stem for where my paper poppy is, and then some lines to represent some leaves. All right, I'm gonna do a little curly cue. And I'll do, I uh, gotta do the Continuation of the stem on the far left-hand side here. So either that may overlap this uh, paper uh, flower or not. If it overlaps, then you know just kind of let it be and then draw in a, another line for a, a leaf or continue on that stem there. All right, I'm gonna put in a curly cue to represent a leaf. There it is. Okay. And I do have a few more curly um, and ornamentational lines that I want to get in place before I just kind of let you go for it and add whatever lines and embellishments that you'd like to add. So moving across the page here, uh, or canvas from left to right, 
left. Um, maybe you want to add a, another curly Q stem coming down. Moving further to the right, we've got a curly, curly Q coming from that far, far left poppy, all the way down at the bottom there. We've also got an offshoot Came from that stem there, and I did give a little bit of a break. I'll pick that back up and continue it down. There we go. And I do have um, a wiggly line, kind of just kind of randomly off the uh, left hand side of that top uh, poppy. I'm gonna put that in. You can make that a uh, curly cue also if you'd like. Give you uh, about a minute and a half here to put these lines in place. And then I'm gonna talk about ways to embellish, uh, ways to add more lines, fill up the space here and make it a little bit more exciting and personalized. I cleaned off my my detail brush here and you can be cleaning that off at any time don't feel like you have to continue with a brush that is not working well for you if it's got too much too much paint blobbed all up on it what, what good is that going to do you just go ahead take a moment clean it off and then get right back to it okay so I need to fill this canvas up a little bit more with with some activity. And so you've got a couple different options. You can add more curls to represent leaves. You can add more stems to go to other flowers. You can you know, paint more flowers if you'd like in between that. Uh, you can also add black dots, kind of a line of dots, and I'll, I'll demonstrate that also. And then if you would like, you could pick up some of that gold paint again and add gold dots. So I'm gonna still leave my, my paper poppy here. I may have to move it depending on what I end up doing around it because I would hate for my poppy to get uh, black paint on it. So got the paper poppy here. Uh, on the left-hand side, hmm, what other embellishments do I feel like adding? Well, I'm gonna add a little more water to my black paint because it is starting to thicken up with that fan on. Just a little bit of water. So it's like a thick ink wash, makes it a little bit smoother for me and easier uh, to make some nice fluid lines. I'm gonna add a couple little offshoots, like little stems here and there. So that would be, I guess maybe it could look like a thorn, but it's just a little offshoot. And so I've got that on the far left-hand side. I'm also gonna be adding in just maybe um, a couple more curly cues here. I'm gonna move over to this uh, bottom flower here. It, I'm gonna put in, there we go, a couple more leaves to help fill up the space. Now, depending on how big your flowers are to the ratio of the painting surface that you have, you may not have too much space. So this all may be just a little too much for your painting. And if that's the case, just kind of sit back, take it all in, and then based on everything that I've shared with you, choose which is best for your painting. 
So I've got that one. Let's see. I'll, let's add a couple more, a couple more leaves here. I'm going to do one uh, off the canvas here. Okay, so I've got some lines in place. I may want to add a little bit more in just a bit, but I want to show you some of those fun dot embellishments that I was talking about a little bit earlier. So you have two options you can use the back of your fine detail brush or the tip of the brush. If you choose to go with the back of the brush, I do recommend cleaning the top of the front of the brush because too many times I like painted black on myself as I'm doing stuff. So make sure you keep that clean before proceeding to the other end of the brush. Okay. So first I'll show you the painted dots. So I've got a little bit more water to my black, stirring that up. And I would like to do, mm, let's see, maybe a row of dots. Um, and I will take them up and around this top here. And I'm kind of just getting a, a curve started with them. All right, so there I've got a curved dots and you can make them bigger in some areas, uh, you know, closer to one end to another and or you can keep them all the same size, space them close together, space them further apart so it can kind of um, like a slinky. It can, you know, it can expand and it, or it could be shorter depending on which portion of the segment. So I just made the several at the bottom of the row, you can see a little bit larger um, and then it tapers at the top. Okay, so I painted those and I'm gonna do that again elsewhere. I'll give a, a demonstration of the same thing a little bit closer uh, to, the, to the camera. I'll do another dot. Now I'm still using the, the tip of the brush here. Okay, so there are some dots. If I wanted to make them a little bit larger, pick up a little more paint. Just make your dot larger. Okay, so there is another line. Um, now I'm going to demonstrate the dots with the back of the brush. I'm going to clean my brush up, of course. So uh, clean that. All right, so I'm going to put some dots in. Hmm. Sure, I can put some dots in along the bottom here. Dip that tip the back end into the black paint. I will show you that up close. If you did not see that, we'll put some dots down here at the bottom.
Oh, time to reload. So though this is a nice technique and it, it does give you some um, good looking dots, the paint is applied significantly thicker. So it's gonna take obviously more time to dry. Keep that in mind. If you were planning on transporting this painting or using it for any uh, specific purposes in the immediate future, that, that paint is thick and it will probably require at least a day of drying. It will be tried to the touch, but inside there's still some wet paint. I'm gonna put on uh, some more dots here, but I wanted to let you know, why not add gold dots? You can do the same technique with not only the lines, but uh, the dots in gold paint. If you have gold paint, the color that you use for the background, whatever that was, and do it up with the dots. So I'm going to mute myself, add a whole bunch more detail over the next couple minutes, turn your music up, get into Zen mode here, and just fill up your painting to your heart's content.
All right, then this about five minutes. I am going to fix my poppy. And I actually grabbed another paper poppy um, because I would like to um, add a couple more paper elements to my painting. So I've got some um, duct tape here, which I'm gonna use on the back of the uh, canvas. And then I'm gonna poke another hole to put in one more. You can use hot glue if you'd like, um, or um, some other tape. And I actually wanna use one of these poppies that um, have the tag on them. I'm gonna keep that as a part of my art and maybe poke a hole for that one. So. Kind of play around with the shapes of the petals, the placement of the petals. All right. So there's that one. And I want to put now it may you may use that one that could have the, the tag on it. I'm gonna put one more. Hmm, let's see. Oh, I'll put it, I'll put it kind of a tilted inward here. I have to be careful. I still have a lot of wet paint. So I, I really should be waiting to do this, but uh, I'm a sucker for instant gratification sometimes. Go, that in place, tape that up. And then any, any wet paint that it touches, it's there. All right. So I've got that poppy in place. And I may actually um, glue that down on the back side to allow that tag to stay a little more flat. I don't want that tag to be perfectly flat. I like that it's coming off the canvas a little bit. Again, I like that little bit of that three-dimensional element there. So I'm going to just maybe use a little bit of glue a little bit later or tape to adhere that poppy down just a little bit more so that that tag is a little bit flatter. All right, so you can continue to add any uh, dots, lines that you would like to. Uh, you can, if once this is dry, you have a Sharpie, you can go back in. If you had a hard time getting some of those lines to come to a point, you can use the Sharpie to continue it um, or just lessen the pressure, thin out that black ink just a little bit more. And then of course you've got to sign your masterpiece. So. I recommend signing the, the painting somewhere that is not in the center. Though your name is important on your artwork, you have a couple options. You can do a full name, initials, a symbol, whatever you want uh, to, to include date or not. Uh, you can put it on the side of the painting, on the front or on the back. I'll demonstrate how to do the front and side. I will, hmm, I, can, I, I like to go along lines of stems or um, not to detract from the flowers themselves. So probably, mm, yeah, I think I'll choose left-hand side here. All right, so I put my initials in there. And so really when you hold the painting back, it's there, you can see there, but it doesn't detract from the rest of the painting. That's the goal. So I've got my initials there. On the side here, if I wanted to write my name or the date, I'm just going to sign my initials again. There we go. And I'll put uh, the date. There it is. And you can keep this painting for yourself. If it is in honor of someone, you can write a little message in the back or a little note on the back. 
Um, you can utilize any empty space you have, maybe if there's a special message or poem or something that you would like to put up in, in that space there. Sometimes people like to add words that are, are meaningful to them or a phrase that's meaningful and they put that in the painting itself. So it's a, not only a work of art, but it sends a, a message, a positive message. And sometimes we need words to help people get the message that we're trying to send. So you can use a Sharpie or a paintbrush to write any special words that you would like. You can do print or cursive and you know, use that empty space or just follow along one of the stems, just like I did when I signed the artwork. So I look forward to seeing your masterpieces. Continue to finish embellishing uh, away and enjoy your Centennial Poppy paintings. Thanks so much for joining me. I wish you all the happiness in the world for 2022. And uh, be healthy, be safe, be well, and see you soon.